Hi everyone, my name is Gabriel and this is the Hour of the Raven, your channel for everything Ravenloft, RPG, Dungeons and Dragons and horror. Today we will explore the secrets and past of the mysterious Captain Nathan Timothy, the former Dark Lord of the Domain of Arkandale, who now navigates the rivers that cross the Land of the Mists. Are you ready? The flight from the terrible werewolves forces us to plunge into the turbulent waters of a river. Luckily for us, a vessel with a lone crew member seems to be sailing its waters, and its lone captain rescues us from the waters into his boat. How brave! Ahoy there! See what the river waters offer me. Come, my dear, get on board. I'm Captain Nathan Timothy, and I offer you my modest but reliable vessel, the Virago. We will drink and exchange conversations until you reach your final destination. Soon, I will prepare us something for the work of a river sailor. Always make me hungry. Nathan Timothy was the Dark Lord of the Domain of Arkandale, but he lost his post after the events of the Grand Conjunction, and his domain was absorbed by the domain of Verbrek. Nathan is a natural born werewolf, and together with his son Alfred Timothy, they were the Dark Lords who adapted the myth of the werewolves to the Ravenloft campaign setting. While his son Alfred Timothy represents a more bestial and savage aspect of the monster, Nathan represents the most deceptive aspects of lycanthropy, revealing the monster that hides under a human mask. The troubled relationship and rivalry between father and son, who share the curse of lycanthropy, can be explored by a dungeon master, who can look to recent films like The Wolfman for inspiration. However, although the relationship between these two characters fit perfectly into a context of gothic horror, the domains of Arkandale and Verbrek were very similar, and in the events of the Grand Conjunction, when the Ravenloft campaign setting was revised, they were unified to become one single domain as Verbrek. Nathan Timothy, in his human form, appears to be a middle-aged man of medium height. He has curly black hair, a big and full beard, and tanned skin from exposure to the sun. He always dresses in the simple clothes of a riverman, like a boat captain, usually wearing his coat, pants, boots and hat. In addition to his clothes, he usually carries a magic dagger, used more as a tool than a weapon, and a magical ring that allows him to walk on water. He tends to behave in a friendly and boisterous manner, and can always be seen with a salacious smile on his lips. Despite his behavior as a friendly riverman, his mask of cordiality hides a cunning, cruel and heartless monster who takes advantage of his proximity to commit the most terrible crimes. In his wolf form, he transforms into a dire-sized beast, which resembles a bear. Finally, in his hybrid form, he becomes a grotesque and dangerous monster, half-wolf and half-man. Despite being a werewolf, Nathan Timothy is immune to silver weapons and can only be hurt by magic weapons. He has a strong regeneration and is practically indestructible, being able to regenerate and return even from death after being reduced below zero hit points. Only damage caused by acid and poison cannot be regenerated in this way and can destroy him permanently. Despite being one of the rare cases of Dark Lords who loses his position, Nathan Timothy is still cursed by the Dark Powers. He needs to live on the river, and when he moves more than 12 yards from its banks, he begins to weaken, losing one hit point per hour when he remains away from the waters. When he reaches the end of his hit points, he simply falls into agony and suffering until someone returns him 
to the waters. Once, in the past, he spent more than a month in this terrible condition before finally getting help. The bloodthirsty captain listened to the howling of wolf beasts and longs to indulge himself into a brutal hunt, but he must be restrained to the waters that carry his vessel. But what made this riverman the cruel dark lord of Arkandale? What secrets does the lone captain hide over the rivers of the lands of the mists? Nathan Timothy is a natural werewolf who was born with the condition of lycanthropy in 684 of the Barovian calendar. He comes from the lineage of powerful werewolves from Mordent and is the son of Elwyn Timothy, a strong monster who still afflicts Mordent's domain. The young Nathan always had the spirit of an explorer and was afflicted by wanderlust. He believed that he could one day find his way out of this prison of mists and dedicated himself to explore the lands of the mists. The cruel Lycanthrope was the captain of the ship Virago and wandered around the world on his explorations, leaving a trail of death and destruction behind. The astute, cruel and heartless Lycanthrope posed as a friendly riverman but used this stratagem to attack when least expected. His cruelty and crimes did not go unnoticed by the Dark Powers. In 708 of the Barovian calendar, believing that he had already explored all possible paths in the lands of the mists, Nathan guided his ship Virago through the rivers to the misty border and the Dark Powers then unveiled the domain of Arkandale. Nathan believed he was making his way out of the mists, but his explorations only led him to a new prison. He became the Dark Lord of Arkandale, a region of hills, rivers and dense forests, and full of small riverside communities. The region was full of wolves and werewolves, and reflected the darker aspects of Nathan's nature. Nathan became stronger and more powerful, acquiring great capacity of regeneration. However, he also found himself cursed by the Dark Powers. The intrepid explorer and cruel werewolf was unable to cross the borders of his domain, and more, he would become weakened every time he moved more than 12 yards from the riverbanks. In his new prison, Nathan adopted the mask of a merchant and river navigator, a friendly captain, always ready to do business. Many were the poor souls who boarded his ship and never reached their destination. He controlled wolves and commanded werewolves to attack roads of rival merchants and quickly made his fortune. Nathan married Priscilla Schilling and shortly afterwards they had a litter of six children in the year of 709 of the Barovian Canada. Among them was the infamous Alfred Timothy, the future Dark Lord of Verbrek, who looked frail and weak near his brothers. The river captain had a tumultuous and abusive relations with his wife, which ended abruptly in 713 of the Barovian calendar when after unclear circumstances, Priscilla launched herself from the vessel into the waters and drowned it. To this day, it is not known whether she fell while running away from Nathan or whether she deliberately committed suicide. Nathan never had time to raise any of his children. He maintained a cold, distant and perverse relationship with them. The cruel captain soon found a new wife after kidnapping and capturing Arabella, a young woman who was washing clothes by the river. The beautiful woman was infected by Nathan with lycanthropy and taken with him as his companion on his ship, helping to raise his infant children. One of his sons, Alfred, hated his father, despising the way he related to humans. As a teenager, Alfred left his father's company to go his own way. The young Alfred discovered the myths of the people of Arkandale about the wolf god and became a devoted fanatic of this fate. 
and a few years later, in 730 of the Barovian calendar, he became the Dark Lord of Verbrek. The domain of Verbrek were unveiled to the south of Arkandale and were also covered by a dense forest but were infested by werewolves devoted to the fanatic fate of the wolf god. Nathan was the most powerful werewolf in Arkandale, but he still felt no pleasure or desire to rule his land. His curse imprisoned him to the rivers of his domain, but the captain adapted to his limitation and sought his cruel satisfactions by saving the currents. When the events of the Grand Conjunction occurred in 740 of the Barovian calendar, Nathan felt that the barriers of his misty prison were weakening, and in defiance of the dark powers, he guided his ship Virago to the borders of his domain, towards Valbrek. While the mists were in turmoil, and the hex of sign of Skosa's prophecy were at hand, he escaped his domain for the first time in many decades. The Grand Conjunction was avoided, and the mists became a prison once more. However, Nathan somehow escaped the attention of the Dark Powers. The domain of Verbrek expanded and absorbed the lands of Arkandale, and his son, Alfred Timothy, who had always wanted to prevail over his father Nathan, became the Dark Lord over the unified domain of Verbrek. Nathan may have become the first prisoner of the mist to escape his prison as a Dark Lord. His curse remains, and he cannot leave the banks of the rivers without weakening himself. However, he is finally free from his confinement in Arkandale, and is free to sail the Muzad River, the Arden River and its tributaries expanding the reach of his trail of pain, death and suffering. While we are sheltered on the Virago ship, we drink and talk to our friendly captain. For a whole day we sail through the waters of the river, and the captain asks us to tell him about our journeys, while also revealing about his own adventures. Captain Nathan's stories about his violent past and his ungrateful son start to fit into place and realize that we are trapped with a brutal killer. With no means of escape, we look forward to the vessel approach to solid ground. As the darkness of the night progresses, we realize that the captain's subtle and cruel games have come to an end and his celestial smile begins to transform into huge wolf fangs. At this moment, the full moon shines in the sky, and we are overcome by intense pain, while our bodies also undergo horrendous transformations. Captain Nathan looks confused for a brief moment, and then laughs in his monstrous form at the ironies of fate. With a speech mixed with snarls, he tells us that he will not kill his own kind, and urges us to make a good first hunt. His sadistic and mocking look is the last thing we remember before our minds are overtaken by savage and primal toughs and we turn into bloody thirsty werewolves. When we wake up the next morning, we are on dry land, baited in the blood of innocent victims of our attacks. With horror, we discover that we are in the lands of Invidia. At least, last night was the last full moon of the month, and we will have many days and nights before we become monsters again. Join us, subscribe to this channel, and together we will explore the violent lands of Invidia while we seek a cure for the curse of lycanthropy.